I'm on the Twitch. We're oh my live. gosh. Uh, oh my gosh. So speaking of wives, remember what we were talking about last week about the um going on to the date. Wow, this is quick. Yeah. And being like, oh man, they're thinking about other girls. What? When I was like, Wait, did we talk? about Yes. This? Remember, like you're, we were talking about a drink and we we're comparing it to like going on a date and then it just like stopped paying attention to you and it's like thinking about it. And I said, it's thinking about other girls. And y'all were like, what? Yeah, I remember that. Don't that you was, mean other that guys? That was not last session, though. That was last that week. Was, oh, yes. <laughs> that was not last week. I promise you. Matt, you've had a long week. week. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. Was it last yes. week? I think it was last week. Actually. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> my wife was listening to that. And she was like, oh, they just don't get it. I wouldn't be thinking about other no, guys because you're the best guy. I could only be thinking about other Aww. girls. <laughs> so I was right. That's cute. I was right. And that's cute. That's just that's there's no like side tangent for that. That's just cute. Cute. Well done. Cute. 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 Anyways, it's just because I'm too macho. There's no more macho. Ah, too macho. There's not enough. No, you've got macho the satisfying amount of macho. Around. Set. I don't believe it. <laughs> Eric, take it away. Where are we going? How's oh, everyone Welcome doing? to the Tap Haven Podcast, where we sometimes try whiskeys, talk about games, have fun. Uh, how has y'all's week been? How was the weekend? My sister visited. That was awesome. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, first time coming Exciting. up Exciting. Yeah. What'd y'all do? Wait, this was her first time coming up there? Yeah. yeah. How, how have I been more times than your sister? You don't have babies. <laughs> That's that's I mean, fair. I mean, babies make things degree. very challenging until they get to a certain age. <laughs> Bro, they make things challenging. Period. What are you talking about? True, true. <laughs> we uh, we actually she came a good weekend because there was like two big things going on. There was a gym festival and a big giant craft fair. I'd never seen so many people in the two towns, and like, oh, okay, it was wild. Um, yeah, we bought some cool things. She got. A uh, b- big b- box of rocks because <laughs> we're standing. Uh, it was like the last day of the gym show, and we're looking at stuff. And then the lady comes over and she puts a, a note card, like a flash index card, over the sign that says "entire box five dollars." And the previous one said like five dollars per rock. And this was like a seventy-five pound box of rocks. And then. Allie's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get that. And the guy starts putting everything in like a box for us to take so they could keep their crate. At one point, he pulls out a rough amethyst rock thing that is worth at least like $40 by itself. And she was like, yes, I got it. This was this is the deal of the day or something like that. So I'm not well versed in the rocks business, but apparently, Mm -hmm. you know rocks are good i don't believe that you're anthony anymore because you turned into a robot halfway through that it's the rocks <laughs> it's the, the rocks, rocks is no. taking over the stream yeah I see. yeah it's okay it though. looks like i'm back it's now okay. yeah you're good now yeah. okay yeah. now well, how's your week then <laughs> for those who don't know uh we've been trying to reach nat for like days now and he, <laughs> he's just been off off the grid so so we need a uh, we, this was yeah go ahead we need Anthony. a new bit right when when you have like when you have like that reaction mm-hmm. you should just already have poured <laughs> something and you're just like <laughs> you just this is my week. Just, hey! just like, and, and then that's the hint and, and eric's like so what are we drinking this week we're drinking this and just like, fast forward a little bit we'll, we'll come back to the to that later <laughs> Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> next time, next time, I'll serve it up next time. I didn't know that I needed, I didn't know I could serve something up. Now I know. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's a it's been a rough week leading up to this one, just because I know this is my last like serious crunch on a skill that I'm not good at, and that's okay. Um, my. <laughs> I, you know it's a rough week whenever you're 
parents call you midway through and they're like, hey, are you okay? Because they got like a sixth sense like, oh, man. to check in on you. I was Holy. like, oh, do- yeah. oh, dear. You know what will make you feel better? <laughs> a really What's punishing that? game like Dark Souls. Maybe No Rest for oh. the Wicked. Oh. I mean. You know, something that just beats the shit out of you. Like even more. Tomorrow <laughs> is tomorrow is like literally the delivery of my last task. Like that's nice. going to like make me suffer. So I I just I might just do that. Um, uh, you're on the finish line, or you I'm, can see it. I can see the finish line, and like I've I've reconciled the pieces of me that like need to be soothed with this kind of thing because like I grew up in a family where like excellence was expected and oftentimes actually executed with like siblings so you always were trying to hit that same level but after hearing from the parent that was like hey like i kind of did this to you so i'm really sorry i'm like oh it's it's a little bit easier to process um but yeah it doesn't help when your sister's like a freaking genius Bro, no, it doesn't. I, I, I've met her. Okay, <laughs> she is intimidating in so many ways. She's more intelligent than you are. She's more sweet. Not sorry, not you. I'm talking about myself right now. No, I, like Justin, I know Jim, I haven't guys, met her much, guys. but when I met her, I'm don't. like, you're more intelligent than me. You're more sweet than me. You're far more beautiful than me. You're more patient than me. Mm. You're ev- <laughs> you're amazing. She does. She does all the things. You're incredible. Man. She does all the things, and that's what's scary yes. because she does all the things, and you're like, "What are you hiding? <laughs> like, insane. what is it?" And I found out it's it's her drive to control people. Like she feels the need to like, with her type A ness. Uh, I heard that too. I was, I was, it cracked me. <laughs> oh, I hope she hears oh, that I'm one. I'm going to use that next time I see that. Okay. Uh, but with her type A personality, it makes it very hard for her not to inceptionize other people to do the things that she wants them to do. Mm-hmm. So, like, Anytime that you feel as if, hey, like I had a plan today, but Nikki said, like I had a conversation with Nikki and now I'm doing something else. Chances are it was it it was implied. But anyway, long tangent short, it's very hard living with very high achieving uh, siblings, Mm -hmm. but therapy helps. I'm going to go ahead and check my AC unit because I feel like it's pushing hot air while I'm doing that. I've done that before. That sucks. Go, 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 go. While it's doing that, I'll be right back. So while he's doing that, I can talk about cows because everyone loves to hear about cows, don't they? <laughs> your your herd. Oh yeah, a cow got out again. Wait, did you? Oh, um, again? Yes, actually, yes, yes. Uh, she got out um a few days ago, like on Friday night. It was like ten o'clock at night. I get a notification on like the camera watching the driveway, and we we're just so accustomed to our neighborhood dog showing up that we're like, oh, it's probably him. And so I'm nonchalantly checking it while I'm like watching some Supernatural. And then I don't even see anything. I hear cluck, 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 like the the walking down the driveway. And it took like no time at all to get her back in. It was very convenient. (laughs) Or not convenient, but like nowhere near as hard as the first time but your cow getting away from you again yeah she she got out and she just she was walking down the driveway back to where she needed to be and it was really funny when she got back in because she went over to the other uh girl cow they were about 20 feet away from each other and they just looked at each other and mooed back and forth it's like why did you go (laughs) out there i didn't mean to i don't know you should stop doing (laughs) that (laughs) <laughs> I can't. <laughs> They're so ridiculous, dude. They're so moody and weird. Oh, um, and then my uh, oh. my father in law, his uh, one of his cows finally had a baby. So that's exciting. We've been waiting on that one to nice. give birth forever. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So uh, Eric. And let's see. This past weekend, our my uh, my judo place did their own tournament so we had our home tournament this weekend which i got to compete in and somehow your face looks better yeah (laughs) 
Incredible. My face does look better, but parts Incredible. look worse. I've reopened some of them. Oh, okay. But, um, uh, got the gold for my division, and then got uh, I, I nearly beat uh, an absolutely amazing uh, player in the division up. He's like full time training, trying to do this professionally type of deal, like Olympic level. Not not quite Olympic level. I would say like somewhere right below that. Okay. But he has the possibility. Like he's okay. one of those where if he keeps going, he might get it. Okay. But he's like right below that. And I threw him. I've looked at this footage. If I had thrown him in a national tournament, I think a national uh, referee would have called it my win. Really? But, uh, the, the local judges were a little bit more lenient at this tournament. They were trying to make the, the fights a little bit more interesting. So you really had to like, prove the you throw. had to you had to get yeah. chucked <laughs> yeah and so i missed it by a little bit got the wazari then i ended up trying to throw him miss the throw and then he, he beat me on the ground <laughs> oh no, no no he didn't chuck me he did not get a throw this this guy is known for posting highlight reels of his good throws. I did not make his highlight reel. Let's go. I, and I feel so bad. So I've known this this guy for a long time. He's he's really awesome. He trains at one of our sister schools. Um, I felt so bad because afterwards he was like spitting up blood after fighting me. He had like bitten the inside of his mouth or something like that. So we're <laughs> we're shaking hands and I'm you know giving him the clap on the back at the end and he like smiles and it just blood. <laughs> Coming down his uh, uh -uh. chin, I'm like, oh that's man, that's metal. gonna hurt. That's but he screwed up my my good knee, and oh. so I'm trying to recover from that right now. Do you, and uh, no, Eric. Dude, you, so we, we evened out. Do you do those like <laughs> um, what do you call them things? Uh, knees over toe guys exercises. All the time. Okay. So I've been yeah. doing them a lot actually, and I have a PT guy. Funnily enough, uh, for for those who don't know, my right knee has had a lot of issues ever since no, no, I got no. tendonitis years ago. Yeah, but for those of you that don't know, because y'all don't get to drive this guy around town, he cuts out of the car and then he suddenly flies like 20 yards away. And you're like, why are you running, Eric? He's like, "I my knee gave out. So he like almost falls to the ground. But like like Clark Kent running through another person and destroying them and killing them, instead of tripping and falling, he runs it out. Like he just like explosively recovers. And if anyone's in the way, they die. <laughs> and I gotta Wait. I got I need some landing room here, guys. No, you know? But that doesn't make any sense, Eric. <laughs> what Okay, okay. So years ago, I um I had like a minor tear in my patellar tendonitis or something like that. Had really bad tendonitis. And after I recovered from it, because it, it got better, I that's about the time when I got introduced to the knees over toes guy. I started doing his exercises. I started, I, I ended up getting better. Um, I reinvigorated that injury a mm. while ago, probably a little bit over a year and a half ago. And over time it got better again but after like this this was like over a four-year period come about six months ago that knee starts to just feel different a little bit off and i'm like trying all these things i'm doing i'm still doing all the knees over toes stuff stuff like that working out with it but it well, feels these, definitely yeah. weird and Come to find out after going, getting everything tested, stuff like that. What I think happened was I got the tendonitis and my right leg got a little bit weaker while I was building it back up. Mm -hmm. My left leg got a little bit stronger and I re-aggravated it mm -hmm. and it got a little bit more weaker. weaker. Yeah. And my left leg kept getting stronger and compensating. I tested it. Uh, so I, I went through, we did a bunch of tests. My quadricep. Just my quadriceps soloed out on my left leg can do like 140 to 165, 175 pounds of output in just my quadricep on my left leg. That's like a leg extension. It's not, it's not help. Yeah. 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 That's like a leg. That's extension. the extension. That's the mm -hmm. extension. So whenever you're yeah. flexing the muscle. Yeah. So essentially I could, I could do that much force. Now that doesn't quite leg. equate 
to like lifting that amount of weight because oh, there's some well there's some mechanics there of like actually hinging your leg mm -hmm. that's just the absolute how'd they, amount of force that well, how'd you how'd you measure oh, okay. the force so they have this special machine that gives a certain amount of resistance and it's hooked up to this computer and you actually do a leg extension but your leg doesn't actually move you just put that force against it and then it mm. measures how much output is there makes sense and you do that in a bunch of different, uh, you know, Planes. ways. You can do yeah. it with hamstring, all this kind of stuff. Turns out, hamstring, that equivalent. Calves, that equivalent. Quadricep, 140 to 160 pounds on my left. 70 pounds on my right. Sheesh. Right. <laughs> I know, just good. for anybody who doesn't know, 70 pounds is still in the, like, 95 percentile of, like, strength yeah for the quadricep percentile I mean, like, wise to your force on your left leg though <laughs> yeah. jesus yes so obviously what has been happening over is that i got the two injuries and they they widen the gap and widen the gap and then just over time my left leg because it was stronger just naturally started to compensate more and more without me consciously ever figuring that out and that just put more and more, you know, just overall forces on my right knee, which is why it felt weird, right? It wasn't, I didn't have patellar tendonitis. It wasn't like a jumper's knee thing this time. You know, it was just over time, you that leg was just had too much force coming from my left leg mm. and my right leg wasn't keeping up. So you gotta do PT guys. So Always I'm do doing PT for an injury. Yeah. So I am doing a bunch of different PT stuff. My my guys got me on different exercises to specifically do quads on the right side. And he's going to be monitoring essentially until that output evens out so that I'm exhibiting the same amount of forces in both legs. Man, I hope, out that I hope we're the last generation that has like this aversion to going to the doctor whenever we're actually like don't feel well or like something bad happens. Because I can't tell you how many times I wake up and my shoulder is just like, nah. <laughs> then I'm just like, man, if, if I was if I was 16 again and I had gotten this injury, I would be talking to a doctor. I'd be like, hey, I jammed my arm and it, it went numb immediately after I tried to throw a ball over my shoulder. I think I need to see a doctor. Oh, do it when it's free, kids. One of the, anyway. one of the big problems is just how <laughs> difficult and annoying they make it. Right, like you have to, oh, yeah. you have to go to the like doctor. Not, it takes forever. Yeah, and then oh well, you should get a second opinion because half the time they're wrong or they don't even notice. Like I went to the primary sports doctor at my college for my shoulder issue a long time ago, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Nothing's wrong with you. You just have flexible joints." I'm like, "Whenever I do a pull up, it hurts like hell, and it pops, and I'm limited by my motion here." And he's like, "No, yeah, you're just flexible no. joints." So I go to a chiropractor instead, and she touches me, and within, like, two seconds, she finds a spot, puts me in immense pain. is like, oh, yeah, that's out. I'm like, oh, and she's like, okay, let's do this. Pops it back in. I'm like, okay, how's that feel now? I'm like, oh, wow, that feels really good. And, oh, when I poke on it, it doesn't hurt you now, right? And so it's, like, a weird thing, and then you have to come back m multiple times, which a lot of people don't understand because it's, like, it's like mm -hmm. fixing your teeth. Chiropractors are, like, dentists, but for your bones your other bones <laughs> yeah. your other bones yeah Dentist what are we drinking eric yeah <laughs> man so today we, we we have something really cool so everybody uh, and their mother knows critical role and so we were all super fortunate to be able to be a part of the drop that matthew willard has done for quest in and we've been keeping up with a lot of the quest in stuff one of the things that they ended up doing was working with Critical Role to do a really cool whiskey from the Critical Role universe. Are we allowed to share this stuff? Do we have to hide any of this stuff? There's like a whole book and a map. So. I know. They, oh, so God, this thing comes with stuff. all kinds of stuff. Are we going to we'll, read we'll them the story? <laughs> I'm not all of it. Me. But... And it even co it comes in like a little wheat basket or you know <laughs> a wheat. You mean like a, a a what is a canvas bag? Yes, it comes there in a canvas go. bag. Yeah, 
I mean, but, um, have you not taken I'm, this I'm working on it. I'm distracted by the book. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, man. Get around the book. It's all now, about you know, the bottle, You know what I am going to do real quick, though? Because for some reason, we are, not, we are not getting to YouTube anymore. Oh, yes. I meant to say, I don't think we're live on YouTube. And what was weird was that, that happened last time, too. But uh, at some point, it did go live. Yeah, I don't know what is causing it to be different. I am just going to restart the the stream real quick. Did you and see you have to ha outfit. did you have it open in the browser? You know what? I I don't think That's I did. I think I did, tried doing everything at the same time. So I'm going to I'm going to restart us just to get the YouTube people in and then uh, then we'll be right back for all the Twitch people watching. I'm going to have such okay, a mess of we freaking have, wax all We have the made place. it. We've made it. We're now on YouTube and Sorry. we're on Twitch. We're good. We made it. Hey guys. We're live. Fudge. Hello. Welcome. Fine. We did a lot of talking. Oh my gosh. Did you have you opened it yet, Matt? I literally just opened it. Okay. So this is called the Sand Keg Hide. And this, of course, is from the uh, Critical Role universe. For anybody who doesn't know Critical Role, they're a DD &D group on YouTube, Twitch, all your friendly uh, streaming services. They are probably the most popular D and D group in existence. They really kind of created the D and D craze, I would imagine. I would Bro, say created, it, but definitely well, own it. <laughs> well, at least now, like the yeah. post-COVID craze that For D and D sure. has kind of transformed into is partly because of Critical Role. For sure, maybe not entirely. Maybe um, not. And so the tagline for this wonderful whiskey is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you want to go nowhere at all, drink Sand Keg's Hide. I, so, I don't, pretty good. Guys, I don't, I don't think I want to go anywhere. <laughs> I know. I'm with you. I don't think we're going anywhere. So I, I think we're going to be good about this. Now... There are a ton of things that we know about this whiskey and a ton of things that we do not know about this. So this is a blend of straight bourbons. So oh. this is, this is, these are all straight bourbons, okay. which means that we're looking at a four plus year minimum on the whiskey that's inside of here. We know it's 93 proof. We don't know the mash bill of any of the individual bourbons. We know that it was distilled in Kentucky and Indiana. Okay. And we know it was blended by El uh, Ochoa in Texas. El Ochoa in Texas? That's my yep. place. Interesting. Yep. Okay. What are you going to say, no. Anthony? Anthony, your, your audio just went all sorts of loud. Oh, is it not canceling it out anymore? Or was no, it, it, ever, it completely it was, dropped yeah. out? Has it never been canceling it out? No, it dropped out, and I was like, oh, I can hear everything. No, you're good now. Okay, Eric, continue. <laughs> now, because of that, I imagine this will be pretty interesting. Essentially, the master blender for the Quest Inns whiskey, which the company name for that is Find Familiar Spirits. If you want to look that up, it's all oh. done by Matthew Lillard. He has a master blender that does all of the Quest Inns whiskey. As far as I know, he's also the one that blended this whiskey. Outside of that information, we're kind of going in blind. So I have a few different whiskeys that I wanted to compare this to. And Ooh. I picked some interesting choices to kind of help us on this journey. And so to kind of give us a good baseline, I'm going to be tasting against the Russell's Reserve 10, which is one of my go-to kind of middle of the line bourbons by Wild Turkey and the Weller Special Reserve, which is a weeded bourbon to kind of give more of a kick just in case we get some of those weedier flavors from the Indiana whiskey that's kind of in this in this bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a pour and see what we're working with here. Oh man, I looked at the website and now I know what I missed. What I missed out on. So, for those of you guys who are listening, as Eric's pouring, uh, we originally heard about this a while ago, but there was also another line that came around this that was being released 
before this or after sand keg before before and i won't speak too much about it but going to the website for quest Enders whiskey i have serious fomo <laughs> oh i mean you should you should so Matthew Lillard is doing a line of D&D inspired whiskeys, which we will be covering on the podcast. Uh, Anthony and I both do have those bottles. We're going to get some to Nat so he can try it with us. That's a great color. Yeah, we have a lighter color. It's almost got this amber-esque hue to it. Um, kind of like a non-oily honey mm-hmm. gives you an illusion of like maybe like being a really dusky tiger's egg and I, sorry I, a really dusky topaz yeah and i get some floral floral notes on the nose kind of like this vanilla flowery kind of mm-hmm. note she's definitely sweet yeah, it smells light. I, I can't remember if I said it, but we're sitting around 93 proof for this, so 46% ABV. So we're not talking a crazy proof here. Okay. So it should be relatively light. should be a pretty easy drinker for the most part. Hmm. Okay. Uh, doesn't have a lot of legs to stand on, so it's actually pretty viscous. I... Let me see. I was, I was so um thinking the like opposite. Eric. Um, thanks to my lovely assistant, I will be comparing this to the well-renowned Fireball. Oh no! <laughs> ooh, ooh, no, we have lost all credibility. She walked Eric, around the corner and and was like, "This is all I brought you," and she she just pulled a goof. She she actually she brought me, she brought me one of our say? one of our favorites, Nat. Oh, the oh, old Forester rye. Forester. Old Forester rye. Mm. Now, I'll be interested to know. I do get a little bit of rye on the nose, but not a ton. So I'm thinking it'll be much less rye forward. I think it's going to be spicy esque. You think so? Yeah, Did y'all throw your spicy-esque. first glass out? Yes. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Switch glass. Switch the glass. Throw it. Toss it. Toss it. Toss it. Toss it. Switch it. How are you? <laughs> Fine. Thanks. Welcome. Quite Welcome. well. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. All right. Cheers. Episode twenty-five. Cheers. We are now quarter century centurions. Quarter centurions. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh. So it does have this two part series to it on the first sip. We get a little bit of cinnamon. We get this nice little punch of heat right at mm-hmm. the three quarters that changes the flavor entirely. Mm-hmm. It starts off very honey forward, very light sugar notes. A lot of the vanilla from the nose just dissipates entirely. Mm. It's got more of a syrup slash honey flavor right up front. Then it's got this wood transition into a kick of cinnamon. And then it leaves this aftertaste of floral notes for me. It's very light. It's very... It's it's not a dense whiskey. It's very... um, it's got some thin qualities to it. That nose at the very end is very floral. You're right. Like I, it caught my olfactory in my nose as I was breathing out, and I was like, "Oh, that's a flower bush." I don't know what the heck that is, but that's a flower bush. <laughs> yeah, you get like a um, a little bit of tannin wood notes right in the middle with the burn. And once that burn goes away, it has this like pleasant herbal flowery note to it at the end. I feel like that end piece has like a little bit of like a, a leather tang to it. I can see that. You know, or maybe um, that's just the uh, the uh, the alcohol. Go ahead. Anthony, well, y'all are y'all got? are missing a key thing because you know how like when you look at art, it makes you feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. Well, this uh, experience makes me feel like this art 
that came with it. <laughs> now, it's like now, stinging me a little bit, like that scorpion there. But I'm not completely mad. I kind of like it, but it's it's, it's a little crazy. So, lore wise, <laughs> this stuff is supposed to be made from like the venom of that creature. Yes. So the, let me let me just go do it and and read a little bit of this story because I think where where are we where where are we on the map because uh, this is where we last Anthony. saw Ebra apparently <laughs> so Ebra's Ebra's been gone Anthony where where are we on this journey right here <laughs> Ebra's been gone oh, you've no. been high on that cactus for like two months <laughs> oh no anyway oh no continue so, Eric. Dear discerning adventurer, fantasy, gaming, what makes them so uniquely appealing to creative and curious souls? Some would say the epic clashes of good versus evil, some the glamorous heroes and magnetic villains, both valid answers. But for our goal, it's the worlds. Whether it's a game master setting a scene, an author creating their own language, or an artist imagining terrifying newbies, fantasy goes big and rolls deep. And no one rolls deeper than Critical Role. We've been fans of the series and its expanding universe for years and count more than a few critters amongst our ranks. So when the idea was first floated of doing a crossover event, we jumped at the chance. First, Critical Role are kindred spirits, people who love fantasy as much as we do. Second, we knew their fans would be as excited to drink the whiskey as we'd be to make it. And third, we couldn't wait to dive into the lore. No fantasy world is larger and more fun with more fun characters and more nooks and crannies than Exandria. That's what really sold us, the opportunity to create not just a spirit, but a spirit from Critical Role, a potable, lifted from the story itself and made real, the sand kegs hide. The Rumidom Desert, Grog, the Shade, terrifying beasts emerging from the sand. What could be better? Granted, we didn't make the exact potable from Campaign 1, Episode 65, and that's a good thing. Described yep. as a fierce concoction that numbs the mouth and incapacitates all but the hardest drinkers, we opted instead to take inspiration from the, ins the original spirit. Plus, it turned out to be difficult to source sand keg bile, yep. which is in the original drink. Okay, it's bile. It's not, yep. it's not uh, venom. Okay. Now, Quessin's... Master Blender Ale Ochoa started with base bourbon with that has notes of baked apple, brown spice, shortbread cookie, and oak. It is then blended in four plus year aged whiskey, finished in vermouth barrels for herbaceous notes. That's where we're getting some of those herbal floral mm -hmm. notes is from mm -hmm. that vermouth. And whiskey finished in cherry barrels for a dried red fruit and hint of smoke. The last step, a coin around the neck stamped with the mark of the original makers. So, yeah, this is a pretty interesting blend between two bourbons, one that has been finished in sherry barrels and one that has been finished in vermouth barrels, which gives it mm. that sweet syrupy note that I think I'm getting at the beginning. It isn't quite vanilla or caramel, something that is typical of a bourbon Very and herby. also giving it that herbal floral note at the end. It's that vermouth for you, baby. Yeah, that's, nope. uh, guys, that's you can adjust that's this. Interesting. Yeah. You can make it into your little like do dangle around your neck if you wanted to. I mean, um, it's going like, to be a choker. I don't, I don't know. Not, about not that. me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not even Maybe a bracelet. <laughs> Different podcast. Different podcast. <laughs> oh, That's really cool, though, that, that they made it uh, a mem something to keep, a keepsake. Yeah, that is. It is really nice. The, okay, so just to put it out there, Matthew Lillard is killing the, the marketing, obviously. The Quesson yeah, Whiskies, in, the Sand Kegs Hide, like the little booklets, the map, every, everything about this just screams quality production mm -hmm. and i think that's one of the coolest things is that i and i i've talked with this about to anthony before i don't think there was a person before matthew lillard to go through and put the effort and care that gamers 
and people like us nerds love, yeah nerds into a whiskey they they did Absolutely. from the whiskey point of view but not from the other side of the aisle Absolutely. and so Matthew Lillard is going through and kind of connecting the dots here in a way that the market wanted but was not being done. And so it's really cool to see that. So I'm excited. And I, I really do think that this in particular is going to introduce a lot of the critters to Whiskey. a world they may not have otherwise known could be like this. Now, my question, and this might be jumping the gun, so stop me if I'm going too fast. Um, when is the, where's the bourbon version of this? These are like, two bourbons. These are two bourbons, right? Okay. Yeah, Never mind. Wait, I'm comp- what are two I bourbons? They were whiskeys. I thought we were. So this is a, a blend blended. of two yeah. different bourbons. Yeah. <sighs> Yep, one from Kentucky and one from Indiana is what I'm expecting. It could be a blend of more than two bourbons, but the way that all the marketing talks about it, it sounds like there's one bourbon from Indiana, one bourbon from Kentucky, one of them is aged in vermouth barrels, and one Mm. of them is aged in sherry barrels. Okay. And then they blend those together to create what we have here. Now, just from a legal perspective, it doesn't just have to be those two barrels. They could have blended other things in, there's no repercussion to them calling it a blend and then blending in an extra bottle that they don't talk about. Mm-hmm. But I think f- until proven otherwise, we might as well take them at face value. They For are sure. likely blending two different urbans, and those are the two. One from Indiana, one from Kentucky. One's in vermouth and one's in cherry. Wait, was this only yeah. $100? MSRP for this was... A hundred dollars, which Anthony has just stolen the price well, range Anthony, for. Anthony, we haven't even done the rating yet. We all bought I, this s- together. Stop. We stop already knew the price. that cactus. <laughs> I was trying to bring up, because it's already done, that on top of what Eric was saying, on top of what Eric was saying, look at how much interesting, cool stuff we have gotten Instead of just a bottle. Bucks. That's true. It's true. There's lore to it. There's a actual book that kind of goes through like a story that involves the sand cake as, and uh, some of the lore, uh, some of the stories attached to it. Uh, I don't know the details because I haven't read the story yet. So let me not pu- fully put the foot in my mouth. But there's a lot of content that comes with this that kind of like gives like puts you in the setting so that you can properly kind of fantasize that you exist in this world as you're drinking the whiskey uh, the bourbon it's it dope is, it like is uh, cool. and like the Production actual quality feature, here is amazing it's great so like to matthew lillard kudos dude um in terms of the entire experience amazing yeah. job i would I would venture to guess that every single one of these quest and whiskeys is going to be an experience because I, I don't see why people wouldn't try this after and, trying and the first one. Just to put it out there, Matthew, Lillard, send me an email. If no. you want to be a part of those episodes, <laughs> because we would love to have you. Absolutely. Oh my God. I would love to go ahead and talk to him about, uh, I mean, what was that'd that? be amazing. That'd be incredible. Um, mm-hmm. What is it? Oh, on to the te- tasting notes, Eric. Who who, do you, who needs to start with this oh, one? Man. Because I, like, I think I think we have to start with Anthony on this one. And I'll give yeah. him a second to collect his thoughts. Yeah. Um, I told but, myself I wouldn't pour another shot until we actually did the ratings because I'm having one of those kinds of days. <laughs> but come on, it come on now. Bring I don't us, mind starting, though, Anthony, if you want me. For, it's, you've I, given away well, the I price. Can, I can so start. there's actually no reason for me not to go first on this. Yeah. I could start. You're welcome. I mean, I don't mind. No, Eric's yeah. never gone first. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. I've never gone first. Go. First for everything. So, man, this is a very interesting whiskey. I love finished whiskeys generally, and finishing it in the vermouth to give it this herbal note is a really, really cool note. And I don't think it takes away 
from the bourbon as a thing. I was over here trying it against the Russell's Reserve, which I would consider a five. And in a lot of ways, I think this has more depth of character and more, you know, highs and lows on the roller coaster that is this tasting experience. Now, I think there are a lot of people who don't particularly enjoy vermouth. And for those people, maybe this isn't their whiskey, but they generally love a good vermouth. And so having some of these herbal notes mixed in with some of the woody cinnamon honey sweetness that we're getting out of this. And I say honey sweetness, sweetness, and I said kind of syrupy, but it doesn't fall into like the fake syrupy flavors that I would get. It's re it really feels more natural and subtle. I would love to see this at a barrel proof. I think a barrel proof, this would be an absolutely astounding blend at a barrel proof because I think the only thing it's missing is a little heat. I like the journey that I go in through this. I think it has a nice little staying power when I was kind of going through it in my head. We were, I was sitting at around 25 to 30 seconds before the flavor kind of dissipated into just a feeling on the mouth. So I really enjoy this one. I put the Russell's Reserve. That's like one of my typical fives, go-to fives. It's a great 10-year bourbon. It's around the same alcohol, uh, ABV. And so it's a very similar bottle. And this one just has more depth of character. So I, I don't think I could go below a six for this. I, I would probably really? put this right around a 6.5. It, it has the potential on some days to be something that I would like really want. But I think it outshines a daily driver um, um, in most cases for me. But I think there is a huge caveat to that. You have to enjoy that vermouth herbal floral note. And I, I think it's quite nice. So. Anthony? That's it. <laughs> no? Me next? I can do me next. It's My mouth okay. is full. <laughs> no, it's okay. I got this. I got this. Um, yeah. Eric took a lot of my notes. <laughs> That's what happens when I go first. I don't know what to tell you. No. Um, as somebody who is, who is a diehard uh, Critical Role fan until recently, for those who, of you who are watching Critical Role right now, current season... Not really my jam, but I can literally picture myself watching this for the first time and Grog buying this in in Marquette. Uh, Marquette, I think they're I think they're in Marquette whenever they grab this. Oh no, sorry, they're in Encarel. Yep. So they picked this up in Encarel, and literally, I could I can taste the inspiration that made them say, hey, this is like a spirit that's been brewed with the bile of this massive, like, ex extremely venomous creature. Yeah. The only thing that would really seal the deal for the story of this, because tasting-wise, Eric's already said it, so I'm not going to go into it. The only thing that would really seal the deal is I would really want this to be, to kick a lot harder. I agree. Like it's it's an amazing experience and I'm trying not to copy Eric's phrasing, but to see this at a higher proof would really seal the deal for me to make this into like a one of a kind bottle. Like if this was the same proof or the same kick as the um, oh my gosh, what was it? It was the rye that we had. It was an Irish rye. Oh. The, Sorry, so the Sagamore. The Sagamore. If, yeah. if we had gotten a sag, like a barrel-proof Sagamore level of strength out of this, it would easily be like an 8 or a 9 for me. That being said, it does not have that kick, but it has a very interesting taste. Um, <clears throat> I would give this... Oh, 
man, Eric, you had to say six point whatever. I'm gonna give this a five point five because this is this is above a daily driver. I agree, but I I also don't feel as if I'm fully sold, and maybe that's a maybe that's a comment on me wanting it to be w- completely with the narrative but i'm not getting the whole this is a this is a spirit that's strong enough to make your mouth numb and for you to be almost immediately intoxicated like i don't want to be immediately intoxicated obviously but i would really i would really love to see this kicking a little bit harder than it than it does now so it's a 5.5 for me it's definitely above a daily drinker if you're into vermouth, totally go for it. If you're not really into vermouth, but you're looking for an interesting experience, also worth it. Those are my notes. Nice. Anthony, take it away. So I'm going to basically try to base my rating off of my first experience with it, because um, I think there's a thing that happens where maybe you have to let your taste buds and your nose fully reset. And I don't have my water. <laughs> so I don't have an assistance there and I went down through my benchmark single barrel in my old Forester to compare the benchmark uh, single barrel has way more sweetness at the beginning and like a better just a heavier nose not a better nose uh, and I'm not saying that the sweetness is better either it just feels more flavorful to me but then the finish on the benchmark is not as good as mm. the sand keg. And then the old Forester, um, once I got to the old Forester, because I was kind of rushing to get my rating in, I think it was just like, I can't even taste things and smell things properly anymore. So that's why I'm just going to be trying to remember like the first few experiences I had earlier. Um, and so my rating is going to be like a, hmm, okay. Oh, that, that's my rating right there. <laughs> mm, okay. and, and what that is is actually uh the smell is good the taste was good the finish uh started good but then there was something slightly off for me and it's what eric was talking about the floral notes i am not i don't vibe with the floral yeah. notes i i try drinking gin because my wife loves gin and i hate it <laughs> and i hate yeah, and it I, too i man. think that's entirely fair like if you the, the floral notes are present in this whiskey. The vermouth is present in this whiskey. Mm-hmm. And so you really do have to like, uh, like if you drink a vermouth and you're like, ah, whatever. This might or, be a meh for you. Yeah. And if you don't like vermouth, I it's think this no. is going down the wrong direction for you. I, I like, I truly think this just won't be like, if you don't like vermouth, take our ratings minus three. <laughs> call it a day, you know like hell I think of a that's debuff fair. man hell of a debuff but Anthony could do, my bad our bad no you're good no you're good but yeah the 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 annoying thing was it it kind of highlighted the floral notes even more out of the rye that I had um the old Forster rye and for some people I'm sure that's great that it would highlight mm-hmm. the floral notes so if you were to drink it with other similar things maybe more rye it could just highlight those and help you out. But yeah, uh, a number rating instead of my my new, hmm, okay, uh, hmm, rating. Uh, let's translate that to a, I, I don't think I can give it less than a five because even though I'm like, oh, I don't like that aftertaste thing. It's one of those things where it's like, I, as y'all know, I've struggled with cheese for a while. I've recently learned how to eat cheese and enjoy it. And sometimes there's a cheese where I'm like, oh, okay, I, I, I yeah, oh, but uh, no, that, this one's not for me. Um, <laughs> but parts of it I liked. And so, but this one, it's not, it's not even like, a, oh, I'm not going to drink this again. I think I am going to drink this again because it was like, a, oh, I usually don't like that. But with this, I like 90% of the experience. Yep. Nice. So I'll give it a five. Okay. okay. And I would pay. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> now, now, here's here's the thing. I really like. Them. I am I am one of the outliers in my family too, because my family typically doesn't like vermouth. Mm. I love a Negroni. 
I love Italian liqueur. Like, I love Campari. I love the bitter, floral, herbaceous notes of vermouth and Italian liqueurs like Campari and things like, like aperitifs and stuff like that. I really enjoy. This is a bourbon with some aperitif notes to it, mm -hmm. which combines two things that I love. So it was up your alley from yeah. the Yeah. 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 So I am like biased towards these types of flavors, which is why I say if this were a barrel proof or a higher proof, this would be something like it literally checking all the boxes for me. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. I'm just a simp. I really I'm like just... it whenever I'm just I really like it whenever things actually line up with a story, especially with a story that like I've already invested a lot of time and focus into. So like, yeah. Oh, and don't get me wrong from a marketing perspective, this like insane. Mr. Lillard, this is like <laughs> way too much. You got to chill. You got to chill. You got to <laughs> leave some room of for creativity for the rest of us. Honestly, I could and and don't tell Matthew <laughs> he'll run he watches he watches this he entire watches episode he'll be here like and, uh, matthew we're gonna do an in-person episode for the question yes, please join us yes please um in the woods please um no i was <laughs> gonna say like we do, we invite matthew lillard you know. to do a podcast with us in the middle of a you forest know, you know i i know where i know where we can find a forest <laughs> I wonder where. With a clearing <laughs> and oh some really God. old stumps to sit on. <laughs> we, need to, we need to go ahead. You need to work for the next six months to just like make sure it's like the yep. most aesthetically pleasing clearing in the world. Because if Matthew Lillard actually shows up and it's like a trash heap, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> it's magical. It's already it's already perfect. It's got okay. it's got the right vibes. OK, but I was going to say like all kudos to this company i will say though i would really like it if these whiskeys would actually have a little bit more staying power on the market because i don't know if you guys know this though you guys being listeners because i'm pretty sure these guys already know this stuff shows up and then it's gone like you cannot get another sand kegs hide right now period end of story no no sequel it's just if you were here for this drop you got it if you're not here for the drop yeah well unfortunately it's a supply and demand thing like i've heard linus tech tips talk about that a lot where they're like we are making the backpack for you guys we can't perpetually have the backpack for sale because it costs so much money to make this happen for you so we get to make ten thousand once yeah, <laughs> I think the it. problem is, is that for most companies that want to do something cool, they aren't purveyors in that product, mm -hmm. right? Like, here, here's the thing. Fine Familiar Spirits isn't a distillery. No, it isn't a company that produces bourbon. It's a company that wants to find good bourbon and get it to people. Hmm. And to that regard, they can't just keep this on the shelves at all the time, right? Yeah. They, they can't create a deal with this Indiana and Kentucky company and keep doing this in perpetuity because their goal isn't to create this over and over. Agreed. And I feel like it is the pie in the sky complaint then. Like, be like, oh, yeah. why can't we have this all the time? And it's more so like, yeah. in the reality, the fact that we even get it at all is the celebration. Yeah. And here's so, the thing. I think Matthew Lillard has found a niche that is going to be very profitable for him. It already has been super profitable for him. For sure. And I think he's found a niche that the market was lacking and I think he has plenty of funds to be able to take this and run with it. Oh, and yeah. we're going to see more out of this company. We're already seeing the Quesson stuff come out. We already have a few bottles. We're going to be doing that for you in the future. And I hope he keeps running with it. I, I hope he keeps doing stuff mm -hmm. for this market. 
and it'll just keep evolving and that'll be amazing fingers crossed because I, I i don't know if i don't know if nerd culture is strong enough on this side of the fence if that makes any sense like even the people who have bought into quest end which is a lot of people is only a share of what is the nerddom that exists for dungeons and dragons like to put it bluntly, if I brought this to like a circle for D and D, they would have no idea what I'm actually bringing or the significance of it. They'd just be like, "That's yeah. an interesting bottle. Why are you bringing liquor to a D and D session? You have to role play. I don't understand why you're trying to screw us all up." Yeah. Uh, but that being said, I I I could see this going both either way. Like I could I could see the situation that you see, Eric, where it's a complete and utter monster because I, man, if he became a, if he actually started making like origin series, uh, bourbons, whiskeys, like, Oh, be amazing. Oh, ah. Okay. No gushing. I am with you. I'm with you. This is one of, one of my future plans. If the Tap Haven podcast keeps improving, <laughs> look, guys, we are going to get you some cool whiskeys and games and all kinds of shit. So, you know, let's uh, let's go on this journey. Well, not just that. I mean, we want to, like, set up a whole land center where, like, people can come and have a whole, you know, gaming center thing but also use it for like there's something that we all like called a true dungeon be potentially a location for that to be hosted as well and other Uh, just awesome nerdy event things so like instead of just going to a distillery and having that awesome experience which it already is you can go to a distillery and have a nerd experience on top of the awesome bourbon experience so, so like cool. D&D in a castle, but instead of a castle, it's a distillery. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you the, know, like a, what is it? A, a gaming bar. Like, my, Oh, no. You, nerd bars dude. are, dude. Oh, we don't talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> you might be thinking about something else because I'm talking about like uh, in Atlanta, we had this thing where they had a little bit of everything. You had a tabletop sections. You had couch gaming mm-hmm. sections. You had just every option so we we also had something akin to that it did mm-hmm. not it's called meals bar didn't uh well don't 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 think about that okay because okay, cool, <laughs> it's cool. not like we're gonna be moves, copying moves. people that are only doing it doing wasn't that. very long ago <laughs> what, what i'm what i'm saying is like you know you have the rooms available to do whatever you want yeah. to do and those could be some of the things you might want to do in those rooms. Okay. Rather okay. like so you cuz like if you go to like a winery or a distillery right now, it's all open and connected. If there might be one private room, right? And you got to pay a ton to get into that private room. I'm saying like we would have numerous private rooms cuz on top of being able to do what we we're just talking about, nerds are antisocial, you know, so they might want to oh, be sure. with their friends, but they're going to be overwhelmed by everybody else around. And just knowing that they have a nice little spot where they can go and sit and it's quiet, enjoy their time. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Nice little mood lighting so that when people come in, they don't exactly like want to talk to you. They just want to like settle in first. Oh, I see it. Okay, cool. Man. So fantastic little bourbon there. Yeah. Uh, just hit us a little bit harder in the face next time, Matthew. Yeah. Just yeah. A little Feel bit free to, you know, step on us. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's the I, only one who got that right. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Man, speaking of being stepped on. <laughs> Nat, keep your private life private. No, I'm keeping it private. Don't worry. It's about a book. Okay, so um, I haven't been able to play any video games, so I'm just going to tell you guys what I've been doing in the, yeah. in the, in the meantime. Uh, so... Instead of playing video games, because I played a shit ton of Hades too, like while I was while I had time off, um, like right after I came back from the Philippines, I played for like three or four days. 
But after that, I got into a book series called Dungeon Dungeon Crawler Carl. And I don't know if you guys have heard of this series, and I'm going to guess by your faces that you have it. Let me tell you. And I, I, I seem to be like the, the book plug guy. Like, I'm that dude. This series is hilarious, and it fucking slaps. Okay. It's so... It's so it, if you have to listen to it, don't read it. Okay. Don't read it. Don't read it. Okay. The, nar- the narrator goes by the name Jeff Hayes, and hit and he sounds like the man. He has nailed the voice for each of these characters that exist within this book, like to a T. There are two main characters, and I'm just going to tell it to you straight up because you're going to read the book and you're going to be like, "Why am I reading this?" There's Carl, who is a six foot three Coast Guard Coast Guard uh, mechanic, who is who is fresh off a breakup with a woman who uh, announced their breakup so, uh, on social media, and now she's hanging out with the new dude in, in uh, Bahamas. This is all important information. You will need to hold on to it. The other character is a cat named Princess Donut. I'm they they get out of a house, it all gets flattened, and aliens show up, and it is a game show and a race down to the 18th floor. And on the and on each subsequent floor, there is a new game type. And they level up throughout the entire pre, the entire piece, and it gets dark, guys. It gets so good, but also so dark. It's so Jeez. good. Ah okay, I'm done. That's my thing that I've been doing. I've been listening okay. to. I bought all seven books. I think it was seven. Oh man! I think it was six, six maybe seven. But yeah, I couldn't stop. I just <laughs> kept on working and listening to this, these book tapes because for some reason, Jeff Hayes' voice just does it for me, man. And really I will, good. I will be so excited to be reading again next year. Shut up. God dang it, Eric. What are you reading? Oh my gosh. All so so for those who don't know, I I love reading. It's one of my favorite things to do, but I don't get a lot of time to sit down and like open a book and read anymore. Mm. So I listen to audiobooks in the car when I'm driving places. Unfortunately, the well, not unfortunately, I guess, but next year, planning a trip to Japan. I took oh, J- Japanese in college. Oh, you! S- I've oh. I've done Pimsleur multiple times, but because I'm going on a trip next year, I'm refreshing and doing all the Japanese courses for Pimsleur again right now. I'm on Unit Three, so every time I'm in the car, I'm just listening to Japanese lessons instead of. As someone who's been there twice, he doesn't need this, but oh well. Go ahead, continue, Eric. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's what I've been doing. Well, here's the difference, though, Nat. <laughs> Unlike you and most others who are going there and kind of doing some like doing the uh, regular things, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be backpacking through Japan for like a month in the countryside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Guys, so, there's a big difference between the countryside and city yeah. version of Japan. So okay, I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be in some spots where knowing at least uh, enough to get me by is going to be super useful. So. And I, I'm trying to make sure that I'm well prepared for that because it's going to be quite the different thing. But I'm going to have lots of cool stories for everybody here because I'm going to be visiting some of the distilleries in North Japan. I'm going to be visiting uh, the Kodakan uh, for judo. And I'm going to be there with the U.S. team liaison or the Japanese team liaison the olympics and all kinds of stuff so lots of cool stories for y'all when i when i get back that'll be next year but i'm excited for that he's busy is what he's saying i can i guess but um yeah no video games right now guys uh okay i have what do i have downloaded right now i have Baldur's gate 3 downloaded which i i mean who doesn't Hmm. um i have elden ring downloaded which I don't know if I have the I don't know if I have the strength, guys. I, I believe know. in you. <laughs> it's not worth I it. Don't, 
I don't have a lot of games that are like on the horizon. I, I feel like we're experiencing a bit of a lull in terms of releases. Uh, I might be wrong because I don't know. I'm just not playing any games, but like maybe you guys can educate me as to like what's actually coming out right now. Because other than Elden Ring's exp- uh, DLC, I haven't seen much show up on my feed. Yeah, we've definitely been in an interesting summer lull. Of course, this is very typical of the gaming market because after the t- Steam sale goes on, typically there aren't a lot of AAA releases until late in the year. Oh, screw AAA. No one cares about AAA anymore. Yeah, they're the AAA. worst. Yeah, oh, they're the worst. Worried. I look, look, I'm not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> also, However, there's not a gaming lull right now. It's just that a lot has come out that you have forgotten about. Well, gaming there's releasing. so much to do right now. There's so much available. Anthony, Agreed. Anthony, Anthony, and there's not Anthony, enough time for it. Anthony, that's what? true. Wait your fucking turn. <laughs> We're having a conversation. There's no. I know. I know. Wait your I fucking know, turn. Get out of here. <laughs> well, because I, I want to be able to write this down, and I can't write it down when Eric's telling me, "Hey, by the way, that game sucks." <laughs> Well, not not me. I didn't say that. Well, I just mean that <laughs> generally the market as a whole always has a lull in the summer. Mm. I don't know why that is. That's been true for a very long time. Every now and then we get a cool release in the summer, but typically summer time isn't a good release time for games. A lot of people like to release. I So, for example, scary games, horror games, they like to release September right right before mm-hmm. october starts because that's the biggest thing if they can release on october 1st they like kill it uh a lot of other games triple a titles things like that they love to release right in november ish because that's when people start to buy for christmas oh. right after that the beginning of the year tends to just be a everybody else releases before the steam sale goes because what happens is if you release in the beginning of the year before the steam sale happens you get the initial push from your release and you get a secondary push almost as strong as the initial push when the steam sale happens the steam summer sale after the steam summer sale steam sales across the board go down by like 60 to 70 percent for like three or four months interesting and that's been the market for a long time not Mm. to say there haven't been great releases in the summer but they it is definitely less across the board well that being said i know that there's games that are out it's just that they don't look interesting like for example the first descendant right it's been out for a bit it's top on the sellers for Steam right now. It's There's a lot of content being made for it on YouTube for the people who... Well, for at least for somebody who I follow who mostly does uh, Genshin Impact-esque games. Hoyo games, pretty yeah. much. Um, and from what I've seen, it looks... Kind of like if Warframe was less for the players and more for the people who made the game. Like, it's beautiful, not to say that it isn't, but I've also seen some things where I'm like, oh, this is a bit of a grind. Um, There's also Once Human that looks interesting, but again, I don't know what it is about these free-to-play games, but they they don't really scratch the itch i don't feel like I'm, I'm i don't feel like i'm giving any credence to like what my thought process is but i don't know like the top 10 games right now give me no sense of like excitement whatsoever and it's been and it's that's that's kind of where i've been with gaming for a bit but definitely now since i've actually built this pc for the purpose of playing games i'm like I have nothing. I, I mean, I have stuff to play, but like nothing that's like, oh, I'm going to go home and play this. Like I have nothing on my schedule. My wife is going to be mad at me because I have to play this game for the first two hours while I'm, while I'm at home. 
and that's that's where I'm at with it. So, Anthony, if you have if you have a game for me, if you have something for if you have information for me that will like give credence to the fact that there are games out there that I that I should be excited to come home and play, please enlighten me because I have no idea what's going on and it all seems very boring. So, unfortunately, I believe that there's a lot of credit to what Eric was saying. It's not just... So the market reflects reality. And the reality is we humans with our culture and our timings and the seasons go through collective like like psychological phases. Mm-hmm. And this time of year, every year, people say... I feel like there's nothing to play. There's no good thing. I don't have that feeling that what you were describing, it's happening to me too. I don't have that feeling either. The only reason I was able to retort is because I actually have a list of games that I want to play and record content for that I know exists. And because that exists, it is a direct uh, disproof of how I feel and when you expressed how I feel. And so they are there, but we are going through basically a mood. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a a vibe, if you will. Yeah, it's a literal like time of season vibe. It's almost like sad, you know, during the winter when people get seasonal oppressive disorder or whatever it's called. That's like a similar Mm -hmm. thing that's that happens. It's I think it's a combination of like just being tired. And you, you go Fair. on trips, you see family, you see friends, you do random things that is out of your usual. And during that time, you completely forget about what you were looking forward to. You come back and you look for what to do and there's just nothing, nothing to do. And you're just confused. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but like once human might be pretty cool. Um, but there are some problems with it. For instance, if you don't play it right now with friends, you're probably not going to have a good time because the servers are probably dead. Um, So a little bit of vamp, Mm V-Rising syndrome. Got it. Yeah. And then, but they're supposed to have new seasons often. And they're supposed to fix some of the issues that people are having where it's like, I don't, where you were like restarting every season there. It's like you needed some Mm. permanence. But from what I've seen, it would be, it's a really fun game. And if, the three of us had the right schedule and time to play it. I think we would have had a lot of fun and we still could. We we could literally have a great time probably playing it. If all three of us are playing right now, but stars haven't aligned. And then Uh... the, the other game you were talking about, the first descendant, uh, that game is like you described, but it's almost like it's in a little bit of a beta. It doesn't care at all about the lore. So you would hate it in that aspect. I would hate it. Yes. No, Yes. So it might be good gameplay and fun for a little bit, but then you'd be like, okay, I don't care. (laughs) I don't care anymore. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to yeet myself. Like, I feel like I did that with V Rising so fast because even now, I'm like waiting for that update that's going to be like, hey, by the way, you people who are really in for the story, we got you slap you with a freaking like off the top like here's a story from jump like restart play the entire story and then also boom there's another area that you can go ahead and do a little bit more of a capstone goes into like where the final boss of v rising actually came from why he's such a badass and what you have to do now to like take his place or whatever and then you have an entire different like game system where you're like somebody holds the throne and everybody is coming for that person and ah, anyway you just you remind me of something that i think we've talked about before where it's like i would like a video game that released like my favorite show release Mm -hmm. a good amount for me to binge at first for sure and then at a good cadence release more for me to binge and look forward to and want to it just do yeah it sounds kind of awesome right and uh i think awesome i think ash has got it we have the sg the sgs's seasonal gamer slumps oh (laughs) dang the seasonal gamer slumps the slumps baby (laughs) 
<laughs> I got the slumps. No. Oh man! Uh, before I pass my baton off to whoever is gonna who's gonna take it, uh, my hero academia ended last week. Ended? Weekend. Oh my god! Ended. I have so much to watch. Yeah, the manga. The manga. The manga. The manga. Like, oh. well, I mean, then yeah, it ended, Eric. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying because know, Anthony know, is a is an anime only I enjoyer. I that think is not true. That is not true. I'm not an anime only enjoyer. Breaker is one of the best freaking things I've ever read in my entire life. Oh, I read yeah, through I like at least all of Dragon Ball. I can't remember if I stopped at Dragon Ball. No, no, okay. no, no, no. I'm just saying for my hero in particular. I don't know if you've read all the way up to the current. No. No, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's that's, fine. A, that's what I mean. Like your source of truth I, for my hero is probably the anime specifically, over yeah. the manga. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, Have yeah, you yeah. watched the recent episodes, Anthony? I not. I we think we have because we we thought we missed something. Then we went and looked at the synopsis for each thing, and we're like, no, I'm pretty sure we saw. What's the that. last thing you saw? What Bro, was the I last big thing that happened? What was the last big thing that happened? I mean, I know there was the big town, and then I feel like something happened a, after the big town. There's a very big thing that happened literally last episode. I'm just wondering where you are. How long ago was it released? Last week, dude. Okay, I'm not caught up at all. Okay, okay. <laughs> very far okay. behind then. Because like I yeah. was gonna, I was about I was to say, gonna... Nat, do not drop this say... bomb on him. You can't, you can't drop this on him. Like it would be the craziest drop ever. You'd kill everything. I'd, I'd, I would feel really bad if I had dropped this. I'd be like, oh. You yeah. didn't know? Yeah, you can't do that. You oh do man, that sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man. man. Okay. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't have anything else other than like I wish there was some other games to play. Um. It's unfortunate that the slumps came for me right after I built this PC, and I'm coming out of this crunch period where I'm planning on doing a little bit of like brain recovery before I get before I get back into the grind seat and like crunk like bust out these certificates but yeah. that's my time what do you guys what do you guys got is Anthony, eric's, do you want to go first or do you want me to cover because i didn't get it last week that's why i was gonna say it's eric's turn because he didn't get it last week i'm gonna say this and then he's gonna talk uh that one game is mid okay go that one game is well, mid. one game is mid what one game Elden Ring. Hey. All right, Eric, go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah oh, my gosh. Fair. So I've been doing a lot of Elden Ring. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, Shots. Um, I, I have really enjoyed Elden Ring. It is a Dark Souls game through and through. I think if you don't like Souls-likes, it, it, is, it is the epitome of Souls-like games. If you like Souls-like games, it's going to be very, very good. I am getting through a lot of the story. I think I've screwed up the story a lot because some weird text lines are coming out of characters that I care about. And I'm like, oh crap, oh, I, no. <laughs> I may have done some, I may have goofed, but uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. I think the fights are have been ex- really interesting. I, I do think it is my favorite Souls-like game so far, but it has all the faults of a Souls game. I, I think it's very interesting. One of the things I want to talk about last time is that for all of the things that are amazing about Souls games, there there are a lot of things that aren't amazing about Souls games. This game doesn't really do that much, if anything, to improve on the things that are bad about Souls games. Why would it? And all that it really does is take the good things about Souls games and turn them up to 11. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that is... If you are a person who doesn't like some of the things about the Souls-like games or the Souls games in general, you're going to continue not to like them with this game because it doesn't do anything to help the bad parts of Souls. It doesn't do anything differently. Additionally, I think it highlights one of the ever-present issues of Souls games and sometimes causes some weirdness in the sense that This game has certain ways of pushing you towards solutions that are very light. It doesn't want to force you down a path. It wants you to kind of figure things out for yourself and find your path. And that is part of the quirky, fun experience of the game is that when you finally have a solution 
laid in front of you, you solved it. You figured it out, unless you looked it up online. But if you f stumble upon a solution, it was because of your own process. And whatever that process may be, you feel rewarded for that, except in the case where certain uh, ghosts can cause interesting situations where the solution is given to you by random chance. Mm. And sometimes that feels okay. For example, you're fighting a boss, you're fighting him for an hour and a half, you're constantly tweaking, you're getting better at the boss fight, you feel the progression, you're summoning your uh, you know ghosts and mm -hmm. you're you're fine and then all of a sudden you luck out and your ghost does something insane and you luck out and get a uh, uh you you stagger the enemy and you get a critical hit and you beat it and you're like that was really really cool like my ghost won me the battle but I have been working so hard at this. I felt the tangible benefit. I felt like I was getting better and better at the fight. And then finally, I lucked out and I felt good. And that that feels fine. Honestly, I really don't have a problem with that okay. part of the gameplay. Like you lucked into that solution, but it doesn't feel bad. You had the effort, you put in the effort, and you got rewarded for it by random chance. And sometimes that happens. Awesome. Then there is a boss that you have to, you, you end up having to beat at some point in the game. And it's, it's a boss that is this huge flying monster. <laughs> and at the point where you do this fight, <laughs> you get one shot by this boss. By every attack. <laughs> but, Matt, listen to me. You, you go through and you've done all the quests, you're exploring the world, and you find this wonderful little girl sitting next to a wolf called Lutel. Lutel, Lutel, however you want to pronounce your fucking name, I don't know. And she goes, let me join you. And you're like, perfect, join me. That sounds awesome. And she joins you, and you get this wonderful little ghost. And her ability is to sit wherever you summon her, and she shoots arrows. <laughs> and then you walk into this boss fight, and you go, hey there. And you summon her. Huh? And then you dodge <laughs> for 30 minutes, and she'll kill the boss. It's like, it's like guaranteed. You don't have to do anything. And it feels really weird sometimes when it that happens. It feels bad. You mean yeah. boring? It, it, it feels it bad. Sounds so boring. And, sounds like bad and game design. And, and here's the thing. <laughs> and I concede 100%. You're, you're not wrong at all. There are cases where the ghosts are designed in such a way and the bosses are designed. In, and here's the thing. That particular boss, this boss that I'm talking about, uh, which I won't spoil, but anybody who's played up to this point will know what I'm talking Dude, about. Dude, it's For been anybody a else, month since it's been out. You can say the boss's name. I either well, this isn't in the the expansion. This is in the main game. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the. I thought you were talking expansion. I was like, I I was laughing so hard because I there's thought there's a you boss. Were <laughs> there's a boss like this in the expansion too, but I I'm specifically topic talking okay. about a boss in the okay. the original okay. game. Okay. But when you get to this boss, he one shots you with every ability. Unless you're a specific type of build, you get one shot at the time you fight this boss. And so essentially, to beat this boss without using a summon, you you have to have have perfect to dodges. Perfect. Yeah, you yeah. have, to play, you have right. to play perfect. And that's intentional because this boss is a essentially a god, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so playing perfect makes a lot of sense. Now it's a hard, hard fight to play perfectly. Right. And this particular boss fight, the way it's designed is super, super punishing. 
and super annoying to play through. You're going to have to fight this boss maybe 80 to 100 times Jesus. to master this fight to be able to beat this boss unless you have this particular summon. And then this particular summon makes it so this boss is doable in five to ten times. Because mm, you just have to draw, dodge enough yeah. to get out the way. You just have and to find And so those, the way signals. that this is designed is very interesting because then you have to ask yourself, was the intent of the game design such that this summon was a requirement for this boss for normal players? Or was the intent of this boss to fight it a lot because it's this otherworldly being that's supposed to be insurmountable, right? I think it's and supposed to be both, man. But that's, but that's uh, agreed. Maybe that's the case, but that's interesting, right? And I think from mm -hmm. Anthony, like how Anthony said it, you either have to have a boring fight or a l super long grind, both of which can be mm. boring in their own way, depending on the player. True. And in reality, what you probably want is something in the middle, something where you grind for a reasonable amount of time and then you, you, you beat the boss. Mm -hmm. rather than this in between and here's the thing not every boss is like that in my opinion most bosses are not like that actually i would argue it, up up so far as the bosses that i have fought in the game up to this point most bosses every boss except for this one has not been like this it's mm -hmm. been i figure the boss out and then i beat the boss with skill and that does not take an unreasonable amount of time until I got here. And then it was like, this boss is super, super punishing, likely because of its design. And you need to cheese it or you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. And those types of fights are the ones that always interest, uh, like are very interesting from a game design perspective from, from yeah. software. Yeah. And they have it in every game. This is not unique to Elder, Elder, uh, like um, Elden Ring, Elden yeah. Ring yeah. which is why I'm like, I, I don't get consider it. that good. <laughs> and so if you consider that bad, it's like, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you didn't like that about the previous games, you're not going to like it about this game. It did not yeah. help this situation. It didn't fix that. Right. And that's weird. I don't think From Software has gotten any feedback to imply that they should do anything differently than what they've already been doing. No, and ninety percent of the player base that loves Elden Ring is going to be like, "Dude, just get dude, good, just and get good." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, put a pot on your head and take off all your fucking armor, dude. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and to be That's fair, just... you can do that with this boss. It just takes an absurd amount of time comparatively yeah. to the other bosses, and people yeah. will be like, "Oh." You haven't faced a lot of the hard bosses. I'm like, no, 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 no. I've done a lot of the hard bosses. This is just a uniquely weird boss comparatively to every other boss up to this point. Like, uh, uh, Morgoth, uh, like all of these other bosses that are uniquely hard for most of the player base <clears throat> aren't designed like this boss, right? You learn their movement set. It turns into a rhythm game. You mm -hmm. do the rhythms correctly and you win said fight. This particular boss has a lot of rhythm sets, like just more than the average boss. It is more punishing because every single attack one shots you at this point in the game, unless you're playing specific builds. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just weird. It's weird. That game design is weird. And I would I'm, consider it not good. I will, I am holding my breath for you to hit the Shadow of the Earth Tree content because the only feedback that I have ever heard from that game, and they may have patched it out at this point in time, so I might be wrong, but the first two bosses of Shadow of the Earth Tree are literally that situation where, yeah. like, you have to play perfectly. Yeah. And if and you I don't, you're going to get cucked. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be going into them blind. I'm about... Uh, so I, I am by heart a completionist, so I'm like 60% complete Ugh, with the base game. taking too long, Eric. 
I am going to 100% that game. Fine. Like I have done every other Dark Souls game. Uh, you know. Um, Fine. Now, the only problem with that is that there's a lot of different pathways in Elden Ring. Like comparatively to the other Dark Souls games where there's only like four or five endings, Elden Ring has like a ton of different cases, mm -hmm. but which mm -hmm. is different, but... I, I'm gonna I'm gonna complete the game. I'm gonna go to the Shadow of the Earth Tree, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna beat that, and, and then close the chapter on that game because it yeah. is the devil. I, to be fair, even with that one boss fight, I will say I enjoy those types of games. Uh, and here's the thing: I love rhythm games, and I think the so minute of you, you like this game. yeah, I think the minute you stop thinking about uh, Dark Souls types games as a combat game and start thinking about them as a rhythm game, it gets more enjoyable. <laughs> I hard disagree, actually. I hard really? disagree as well. So I tried very hard several weeks ago to play, and I forgot about it when we were talking about what we played yeah. recently a few times ago, uh, to play this because it's it's like several other games where everyone loves it, and I'm like, okay, I'm, if everyone else loves it, I probably would love it too. And maybe I'm, I just need to be in the right mood. I don't know. But I tried really hard on multiple sessions, multiple days, different moods. And the best way I can describe it is, sure, you can call it a rhythm game if the rhythm game involves riding a bike with training wheels that are loose and uneven. So you're constantly going back and forth, bouncing between them, and you have to, like, get it just right. And it's actually broken, but, you know, people are saying it's a rhythm game, and if you just get it right, you'll you'll do it. And it's like... Dude, I've played rhythm games, and when you play a rhythm game, they feel good and they're consistent and they're they're great. It, it's not a rhythm game. It is a game where they made something a long time ago, and maybe they were the first people to do something like this, and so people fell in love with it. And it's kind of like Pokemon, where because people already like it, they have no reason to change it, so they're getting away with bad mechanics, bad game design, bad stuff. The Dark Souls genre, all this stuff would be so incredibly enjoyable if their boss fights and their game primary game mechanics were like a well-tuned motorcycle that is Monster Hunter. And then of course Monster I... Hunter has other problems, right? But like I well, here's the thing. Eric, let him I, finish. No, Eric, no, let no, him finish. I, I, let, I him just... <laughs> let him cook. Let him cook. Because I have things to say as well. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, it's just, it, it's it's slow. It's inconsistent. And it becomes boring and tedious. And it's like, if I want to get the perfectly right thing and complete a level, I'll go back and play Mario. Okay. Like. <laughs> it's, it's just weird to have that type of expectation of your players and it's insanely time consuming like true that's fair it, you you give the illusion of freedom of choice and movement but not actually provide it it's like pretty much you you go into this big camp of things and it's like Oh yeah, you can solve this however you want, but actually, there's only really one way to do it, unless you're already overpowered and stuff. Like it's just, I, 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 I used to think it was me. I think it's actually not good, and I just happen to not have the nostalgia to make me think it's good. I think there are a lot of things about it that are ten out of ten, in my opinion, and I think there are a few things about it that are kind of archaic like you're talking about but it's just the mechanics it, they are they are jank they do not feel fluid it's like riding a broken bicycle with broken training wheels i disagree to with that analogy Dude, a little bit because i think on I, the I other end sekiro well. is great Sekiro is good, but I would argue that Sekiro and Dark Souls have different investiture into their movesets, right? I think the investment you have to make towards a move in Dark Souls compared to Sekiro is different. And so the risk reward that you have for different types of builds in Dark Souls, because here's the thing, Sekiro has one build that you do 
everybody that like there are no builds in Sekiro. There are just you do this in Sekiro. But Elden Ring has thousands of builds that you can choose from that are all viable for beating every boss in the game. And people have showcased so many different ones. Like if you look at um what's his name's uh site or well, builds that are viable, you have so many different ways to solve and progress and, through the game that are totally different play styles. And when you talk about that, like I understand that that's really cool and interesting for different types of people because you just remind me of like a racing team for Formula One or going back to the motorcycle analogy. I love driving the motorcycle. I Sweet. do not care about tuning it and doing all the mechanics and doing all that research and making sure that it can do this, this, and that. I'm like, if it can do what I want it to do, I am happy. If it can't do what I want it to do, I'm not. And so there are mechanics and tuners, and then there are drivers, and sometimes there's a mixture between people, and sometimes there's not. Like, some people can yeah. do both, some people can't. And I never really cared too much about the tuning thing. I, the, I can, yeah. I can make something look weird. Like I can put it in a whole bunch of blue metallic paint, and be like, "Look at my blue car," <laughs> and I'll have yeah. fun doing that and picking like the rims or something stupid and unimportant. But like, you show me a big list of things like in Path of Exile to fine tune and choose between, and I'm like, I just want to drive. Why are you not letting me do that? And that's when and games I, lose me. And Sekiro is always going to be the better choice for you in that regard. Because Sekiro is all of the good things from Dark Souls without all of the, the choice. You just get to experience a finely tuned build at its finest and experience these, these fights in that way. And th here's the thing. The fights are more consistent in Sekiro and they're more... They feel more oiled and clear because they were designed with only one build in mind, right? They didn't have to account for a thousand possibilities. You can make something so much more streamlined when you only have to account for one. And so Sekiro gets all of the benefits from what you want as well or from, from a ground up design standpoint to be able to do that. You make me think that in general, like many different types of games, not just Elden Ring, would benefit from being able to tell the player, hey, this is the car setup you should choose if you don't want to mess with anything. If you just want to play the game, choose Barbarian and play through the whole game or whatever. You know, like you don't need to, you've got the on rails experience. They even have that in like League of Legends, right? Where you pick a build and you don't have to think about it. Because there's a lot of people like that. And those people like me are capable of getting to the point where they can enjoy fine tuning the thing. But first they have to play the game all the way through. Yeah. It's kind of like when I'm playing a board game and you, you like to know the rules ahead of time. I have to play the game like without knowing the rules to learn oh, the rules. The and then, yeah. yeah. And then on the second round through is when I can start tinkering. Like and tinkering and doing stuff. Yeah. First time through, I just have to ride the bike. Yeah, that's fair. I, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it is a perfect segue into my second game I've been playing a lot, which is oh. Path of Exile. <laughs> oh, 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 Did you get to build so, things? Yes, I got to build things in oh, Settlers man. of Kalgor, which it, it's, by the way, I think the most amazing thing about Path of Exile is that as a free game, it has like 15 different games inside of it that you can it's enjoy all separate, which is like a crazy feat in a lot of ways, how how much content there is in Path of Exile is pretty astounding. Don't forget right? that they're in the middle of making Path of Exile 2, yet they just released which, this huge Which looks thing. insane because there's going to be guns and all kinds of nonsense. Like guns. Path of Exile 2 also, by the way, for anybody like Anthony, who's like, I, I see the skill tree and I'm like, I just want to enjoy the game. Path of Exile 2 is trying to solve that as well and make it so that you don't have to worry about all that shit. You can just engage with the, the mechanics from a playing perspective much more easily 
And all of this build stuff is kind of this secondary notion. And Path of Exile 2 is looks like it, it looks like. I haven't played Looks it yet. Like. I haven't played any. Of the I offer, remember looking it at it and like having that, solving a lot of seeing it. that too, and thinking that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I that have, is definitely their goal. I have wanted to play Path of Exile so much, especially with the new expansion, but yeah, yeah. I struggle. <laughs> Settlers of Kalgor, obviously, it's a very long game. I because of the, our tournament like last week, a lot of my last week was put forward to like helping out with our tournament and stuff like that. So. I haven't been able to get too far into it. I've only been able to do like 15 hours or so. And so I've only been able to interact with some of the new mechanics. But so far, the new town looks amazing. Well, so um, is that new town, the town that you get to build? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You essentially start from scratch. You add workers to it. They added gold to the game, which is crazy. How much control do you have over the build? Is it like a preset mm, situation or yeah, do you actually get to customize it? Think about mm. it like it, it feels a lot like the old Bastion uh, town building oh, in the okay. sense where like there are little pockets and you can assign different things to the little pockets and areas mm. that make it slightly different. But in, in essence, you're That's just assigning shit. workers. It's the same for everybody. But it's still mm -hmm. an enjoyable interaction, but it is not a like it's not like a V rising builder experience. Yeah. For okay. sure. So it's it's like oh. 50 percent of the way there. If you were looking for a builder, it's like half of the way there. But I think it adds a depth to Path of Exile that is kind of cool. But before we before you keep going, did you know that in uh, Once Human? You basically have Mario Maker. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I don't know how much is in there, but like I saw like some videos. You can design like your own levels for your friends to come and play and try and get the loot and stuff. That. I thought you would love yeah. that, Eric. Yeah, that is one of the things I've been meaning to try out for once human. But the last obviously the last two weeks because of judo, the two back to back judo tournaments has been kind of hectic. And that leads me to segue to my third and final game. Oh. Uh, which Anthony will judge me a lot for. Um, so will Nat, but this cool. this this one. Uh, so because of how much just life stuff has been going on, I've been looking for something that kind of like a Rusty's retirement that I can use as a clicker, that I can have on the side, that I can kind of, you know, numbers go up and I can just relax and kind of do things here and there. Say the game, Eric. Do you know the game? So, now? can you guess the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a take a guess, Ned. If you actually, Anthony, take a guess because I think you don't know what it is either. No, I don't. That's I've been trying, and I for a second I thought Nat might have figured it out, and I was like, ooh, does he know? I don't. I don't know, but I have a feeling I'm going to be mad. I started. It's not Blizzard, is it? No, it is not Blizzard. I thought about that a lot, though. <laughs> 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 he thought about it but honestly that wasn't what i was looking for like i have been thinking about whether or not i'm going to try the new wow expansion and whether or not i should do the pre-patch i haven't decided yet you but either way i wanted something that was more relaxing than that that i could play on the side that really was just like a clicker that i could have on my side screen you and say like rune stuff on the side I have created an Iron Man old school RuneScape account. I fucking, I, got, it. I fucking got it. You did get it. You did get it. So I have been doing Holy the shit. Iron Man old school RuneScape experience, um, which has been a nice little clicker that I've been keeping on my side monitor every now and then and kind of just doing stuff on the side uh, that has been honestly... There are a few things that I've learned since getting back into it that I wish every game would do. One is old school RuneScape has a crap ton of content now comparatively to the last time I, I tried it out in 2009 or whenever, 2008, or whenever it was. Um, but the one thing that is so cool that they've added is they have a in-game polling system where you get as a player get to vote on new mechanics and you choose what they do in their next patches and a super majority decides what goes in the game. 
full stop, no Bro. questions asked. If a super majority votes for it, it gets in the game. It's single player? So Iron Man mode, they have a group Iron Man, but Iron Man mode is kind of a single player mode where you have to do everything yourself. So if you want to do baking, you can't just go buy the stuff. You have to get the stuff. If you want to do Slayer, you got to go farm and get the stuff to be able to do Slayer. And so what it essentially does is take out the, oh, I want to level this thing up. So I'm going to farm 20,000 gold and I'm going to buy 20,000 of this thing. You can't do that. You have to go figure out how to engage with all of the different pieces of the game that people stopped engaging with. And the reason I wanted to do that was because I, one, I'm not playing RuneScape to just skip pieces of the content and like do something. I just wanted something on the side that I could slowly engage with to kind of progress over time. And I don't really care if I finish it or if I stop playing or whatever. I just wanted something that was super relaxing on the side that I could have like while watching YouTube or whatnot. And to that end, it has been really cool interacting with some of the new mini games, like the rune crafting mini game or the new storyline, the quest lines, because one thing that RuneScape does better than every other MMO full stop is the quest. The quests are so engaging. They always have been, and they've added hundreds of quests since 2007 that are all very in-depth and all very engaging and interesting. And so it's been fun to just have that on the side and go through some of those things as a side game to kind of just have something to interact with. Anthony was talking about Rusty's Retirement. I tried that out. And I think Rusty's Retirement oh is God. a great game. It's, it's a great concept, for me. too. Well, it's a great concept, oh, but it's just like it's one guy that first time and tiny yeah it's so small yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like and imagine a freaking brewmaster like a distillery game but that yeah the, the, like That's the possibilities there are unbelievable so mm. like on one hand i really liked rusty's retirement but on another i wanted something just a little a few steps further yes for the same idea and old school runescape just happened to so, scratch that niche and of course a friend of ours that me and Anthony know that we used to work with, David, he is an avid RuneScape enjoyer. And so he was talking about it a few months ago and kind of put it into my head. And then when I tried it out, I was like, you know what? This is really what I was looking for. A clicker side enjoyer thing for when I'm doing other activities. Bro. So, two things. No, now I know who to kill. <laughs> dude two things one so no multiplayer means no multiplayer mechanics but you still see other players in the world yes yeah yeah so i see mm. everybody i can interact with everybody you can even do raids and stuff like that too mm -hmm. you just can't take any of their items they can't give you items you can't do the trade the auction house or anything like that but you can talk to them Yes, you can talk to them and you can do group quests together stuff. and go oh, to their house. You just don't get shared XP. You don't get like I can't mm -hmm. kill something and then drop its item for you type of deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stuff like so, that. So and an, another interesting thing about this game mode that they mentioned at the very bottom is that if you don't like this game mode, you don't have to lose your progress. You can like transfer your character to the normal game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Which is really And you really can neat. do that for every option too. So for example, a lot of people start a hardcore Iron Man, see how far they can go without dying, and then just continue on the Iron Man. And then when they've done everything they wanted to do in Iron Man, they, they just transition it to yeah. a normal character. And mm -hmm. now they have a normal character that they can trade with and do all kinds of stuff with. And dude, so the other thing is that um if you like this sort of thing, then someday you're going to love Bitcraft, the game that I got into the alpha. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Bitcraft yeah. looks great. I When it releases, I would love to try it out. It looks cool. Yeah, it, it definitely has that like, oh, it can be very engaging or you can just go fishing while you're waiting for something to like reload or compile. 
and then completely yep. forget about the game for 30 minutes and then oh i'm waiting on the computer to load okay click a button <laughs> yeah and that's one of the things that was so cool uh about trying out old school runescape again is that there are some mini games and some things you can do that have different levels of afk but additionally there was one so my goal with old school runescape i don't know if i'll get there a guy showed off one of these new bosses and they have a dozen different new in-game bosses. They have like 40 different in-game bosses and he described it and showed off how you do it. And he was like, because of the mechanics, it's truly a rhythm game. He put it next to like Osu and showed them off. And essentially for this in-game boss, you have to move around and click different squares around the boss in time with different things. Hmm. So you have to like click prayer, click this prayer, close that menu, open your inventory, click this, click the new square. And all of it has to be in time with this internal clock. So people have like different music pieces that follow the old school runescape clock hmm. and stuff like that. And it really is fighting some of these in-game bosses. So I really just want to tr try out some of that stuff at the end, which is cool. But there are so many different things to do now that weren't there when we, like me and Anthony initially played it in like middle school. But there are like a dozen new things and new interactions that are there that for any level of engagement that you want, that were really cool. And I was like this. You know what? I, I wanted something with some pro progression on it that I could do on the side that was relaxing, it's especially over the last two weeks where I was like so engaged with super active real life stuff where I was like, you need to turn your brain off. Yeah, I wanted something that I could just like click and like enjoy. Is it really side. old school RuneScape? Because there's like a completely separate website. Is it not like the new RuneScape? But with a so uh, to kind of explain for people who don't haven't kept up with the RuneScape or who didn't know RuneScape when it came out. RuneScape came out and then around 2000 and I think six, 15, 16, it transitioned to RuneScape 2 and then it transitioned to Rune, what now RuneScape 3. At some point in time, they forced your character over to RuneScape 3. So the if you were playing like WoW, for example, your live server character from 2007 that like we initially created isn't in old school RuneScape. It's in RuneScape 3. If you kept playing. Old school RuneScape is like WoW Classic. They recreated the old servers, but now they have totally diverged and kept developing new stuff for old school RuneScape kind of like Seasons of Discovery or WoW Classic. Hmm. Except that all the stuff that they put into these Seasons of Discovery for RuneScape were voted in by the super majority of the player base because they have polls in system where you get to vote on the next things that they develop and release. And if they get 70% or more people voting for it, they'll do that feature for the next release. And so now, over the course of like 10 years that Old School RuneScape has been in development, Old School RuneScape has added totally new areas to the game that don't exist in RuneScape 3, totally new dungeons, new bosses, new raids, new mechanics, entirely new skills, all types of stuff that was voted in by the player base. Biggest question though, is it pay to play? Uh, so... I played free to play for about two and a half weeks of and Iron Man there, of Iron Man. Okay. And there's there's probably a thousand five hundred hours worth of content for Jesus free to Christ. play. <laughs> and however, if you pay to play, it's kind of weird. So pay to play unlocks like 250 quests it unlocks like 16 different areas um and a bunch of other stuff and so what it turns out to be is that if you pay the monthly subscription for pay to play 
then, and it's just a monthly subscription. There isn't a pay to play. Like you can pay more than that and get more out of it. It just unlocks everything else in the game. However, you can do all of the skills that are free to play to the 99. You can engage with all of their mechanics. You can do all of the different things that are there and they don't cut you off at all for any of that. And then if you pay to play, you just unlock eight times the content. So I think if you're pay to play, you have upwards of like 6,000 hours of content, for example. That's insane. And for free to play, you have like 1,500 hours. So the way that I would say people to engage in it, do free to play for like three to four weeks. And if you're like, I want to keep playing and doing stuff and you enjoy that, pay to play just unlocks more cool stuff that you can do. And if you don't like it, you can either keep going with free to play in your free time or you can say, nah, I'm done. Yeah, you know, uh, Nat, this might be the best game to challenge your new system graphically. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Uh, ha! But yeah, so that's that's... Those are those are my big three games. I haven't I haven't played anything else over the past few weeks. Um, it's been a lot of Elden Ring, a lot of Path of Exile, and then a lot of old school RuneScape in my free time. So, and all three of them have been fun and interesting in their own rights, depending on my level of mood. Mm. Uh, most of the Elden Ring was before my judo tournaments. Once I started really going hard on the judo tournaments, I was like, I need to turn my brain off. And uh, so that's when old school RuneScape came into play. And then, of course, I played a lot of Path of Exile when I had a bunch of free time. So. Fun stuff. Anthony, take us away. Tie a bow on this guy. You well, know? you know, due to, the seasonal, due to the seasonal gamer slumps, I have also considered playing World of Warcraft, but I did not. Oh, uh, good for you, man. Uh, it sounds like Anthony and I are going to text each other, start playing, and then force be like, uh, be like, hey, to, uh, to play with us. Do you want to? <laughs> uh, I mean, especially because like, aren't they doing like, I don't know if it, maybe it was Guild Wars. Someone's doing, They're doing like the housing. pre-patch right now. Yeah. Um, and then, so I also at one point was just wanting a weird style of game. And that's probably the only reason that I didn't have like, a, oh my God, you're playing RuneScape. I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. Maybe that would work out. Oh God. <laughs> you're like, huh, hmm. maybe. Yeah. Well, it's only because of like the unique experience of uh, not just my, like, like m some of my hobbies, like game dev or 3D printing or whatever. You have to sit there and wait for the computer to do something sometimes. And then you're tempted to get up and leave. And if you do, maybe you don't come back. <laughs> you yeah, know, you kind of miss out on stuff. So like having a game like Rusty's Retirement or uh, was it Bitcraft or maybe this RuneScape game? I don't know where you can have it on a monitor and oh, I'm bored. I'm waiting on this thing. OK, I can click a few buttons. Are you done yet? No, nope. click a few buttons. Are you done yet? Oh, you're done. OK, now I can continue with the project that I was working on. Cause it's, it's one of those weird things. People that don't experience that will be like, well, you could have just been doing other work while you waited on it. And it's like, no, because there's what's called spin up time and spin down time. And if you have to completely reorient your brain to be working on a completely different puzzle, you're just not in the, it, it's literally like going from riding a bike to like, driving a go-kart instead they're they're okay similar but they're very different like different mechan different mechanics different controls and stuff like that but um yeah i logged into v rising at one point and found that my wife and i's castles were all like out of blood which was horrifying but because it was a dead pve because it was a dead pve server slash friendly pve server i guess uh everything was still there so I, friendly and dead friendly yeah. and dead yeah server merges please um i played some more of that played up game that i might have told you guys about which is a lot of fun yeah. um the this is very neat 
roguelike uh, restaurant game, much more, what's the word, intricate and in, in te- I want to say intelligent. Like, there's more strategy than, like, Overcooked. Overcooked is just kind of silly, while Played Up is like, we can figure this out. And then you unlock other things because it's a roguelite. Um, a funny thing about Played Up, if you want to, like, compare it in difficulty... Is that when you go, when I go to the page, it compares it to Spelunky 2. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It says, this is similar to Spelunky 2, which you love. <laughs> <laughs> which you love. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. I'm like, yes, one of the hardest platformers to exist, you are similar to. You know. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, I mean, I've definitely been dealing with the the SGSs because I uh, I actually took some time off last week, and so at one point I'm sitting here at, on the couch trying to kill some time, and I start trying to figure out what games to play on like the PS5, and I updated Diablo 4, I had downloaded Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, kicked that up for a moment, um, you know, it, I'm just I'm searching for something, I don't know what, but I'm trying to find something. Um to play to scratch that itch you know and like nothing's nothing's quite hitting it um honestly the weird thing about it is that the game i'm most attracted to right now is a game that a lot of people struggle to want to play it because there's no tangible progress and it's like during the sgs is it's not really progress that it seems like anyone wants it's it's just a a good ride right yeah and so i'm like oh man what about some sea of thieves like i want to go ride on that boat and take over that really big boat and see what happens you know i don't care about the result um but i did that briefly by myself and i'm not going to do it unless i have like a group (laughs) so makes sense it's the same sense. thing for me, man, too, with the SGS. It's like I so badly want a game that I can go and heal in like a WoW raid or a WoW group that isn't WoW. And mm-hmm. there is nothing on the market that comes close. And that depresses me to no end. Yeah, it's weird. But, like, I think there are those games. It's just we're blind right now. Yeah, uh, yeah entirely. Entirely. Maybe it's the SGBS, Seasonal Gamer Blind Slump. SGBS. Because we're blinded. We don't... There are games. Like, yeah, Final 100%. Fantasy is supposed to be really good and stuff like that. Yeah. And, Final, and it is very good, actually. Yeah, 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 There's the new expansion that came out that I haven't played. But every now and then... You know what it really is? It's like is it? it's like a It's like a deep down... Uh, evolutionary like instinctual knowingness that winter is coming and you better be ready (laughs) (laughs) i think body artificially drops you is like no you don't want to be don't be goofing around right now you need to be making sure that everything's good to go it's getting colder you need to to reflect (laughs) (laughs) entirely fair yeah yeah but actually I, i i i the first time that I went to play uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, um, I had like just been watching Dragon Ball Super or something like that. I think Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is best enjoyed by at least me when I'm ready to rewatch the show. And I might be getting close to that because it really is like watching the show one for one while playing it. As far as I've yeah. seen. I could be wrong. Show is, show is so good. Yeah. Isn't there new stuff? Is there new stuff? No. I was trying to find just out the, the other day. Is there a new movie? The, there's yeah. a new movie? There's a new movie. There's there's new stuff in the manga, but not new stuff in the show. Isn't there supposed to be new stuff in the show soon? They've there... been on and off about whether or not they're going to do another se- season of Super, and they just haven't uh, they just done it yet. It too. Yeah. Is the new yeah. movie after Super? It's the so it's 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 inside of the Super manga. Um. It's just after the uh, the, ter- the universe tournament. So it is after the season finale. Yeah, 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 yeah. The movie is after the season finale. It's the mm-hmm. it's when they bring it's the new Broly movie where they bring Broly truly in 
to the universe. It's not. It's Sorry, a canon. So it's a second sure? Brawly movie. Because there's yes, but the first one is not one. canon. No. No, the no, first no. one where where so the first one is whenever Brawly first shows up in his new uh, version within the universe of Super, with Super Saiyan Blue, like his new, his new coat, right? With Super yeah. Saiyan Blue, Saiyan Blue and everything, and like he shows up, puts everybody in a fucking hurt locker until they are like, oh, let's go ahead and like actually figure out how to do this fusion dance, mm-hmm. and then they and then they 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 put it to task. There's that a one's movie not after canon. that. That's not canon. Eric. What do you you're talking about the <laughs> old You're talking about the there old There are movie. we no. are asking is there's three Brawly movies now? There is Dragon Ball Super there's Dragon Ball Cac, like uh Brawly. There's a Dragon Ball Z Brawly. Like there's a Bra- Dragon Ball Z yes. Brawly that's that, that's, that's not that canon. Before, that's not canon. Yeah. There's we, a Dragon Ball yeah. Super and then Brawly. There's a Dragon Ball Super Brawly. Yes. That is canon. Yes. And now there's a new Dragon Ball Super Brawly. No. You're saying there are two Super Brawly? So then what okay, is this new movie a, about? Because it's an old movie. movie. There's been yeah. another movie called with Super Gohan. Hero with Gohan. <sighs> yeah, with Gohan Thank and Piccolo. You. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's started, y'all started talking about Brawly. I was like, you there's no Brawly in there. You talked about Brawly! That was because that's, you! <laughs> because that's the, that's the one that everybody knows of that's right after the Super season finale. Oh my god. Dragon Ball Super Bra- Superhero Super Duper came out in 2022? Yeah. What? Superhero came out in 2022. But it uses a weird 3D animation style. A lot of people are meh about it. It isn't in the manga, so it's technically non-canon, but it was written by Akira Toriyama. so That makes it canon. So it's 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 canon non canon, mm. comparatively. It, a lot of people put it in a weird spot. It's a weird movie, with a weird animation style, that doesn't quite have a manga backing. But it's not bad. I, it's definitely not bad. It's got a good ratings in IMDb, which oh, is yeah, hard yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad. I'm gonna watch. It's this. just it's in a weird spot. But you definitely should watch it. Um, why is it like the, coming? Why is is it just now coming to the states or something? Because I feel like something changed and it became on topic. Yet it's two years old. Uh, no, they've had a sub for it for a while. The one that's coming to the states hmm. that everybody's hyped for is the High Q one. Oh. The dumpster battle is going to be. It's already released. out. Uh, is it out in the? I know it's out in Japan. It's out in the states. Did it come out in the states too? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I haven't out. seen it yet, but I'm excited. I haven't for either. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to confirm or deny this, but I saw something. I don't know where. Maybe Reddit, and I saw them comparing like, what is it? Ultra Instinct versus Ultra Ego. And yeah. that sounds like probably canon and awesome. Ultra well, that's from Ego. the manga. That is canon. Yeah. Ultra is Ego. Is Ego Vegeta? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 and that like, and then Vegeta starts like actually being a contender. And then the one that Anthony is going to be most excited for Gohan. is Gohan. Gohan. Gohan is Gohan. <laughs> yep, Gohan. <sighs> Man, well, are, Gohan. was there is there a name for it or there is a is name? Too do spoilery. To, do you want me to spoil it? Just say it because I'm going to have to look. Should it I go read it? Way. I should go read it. What should Would I read it on? Some Please. Shit? This is the this is the barrier of entry for me all the time. Sometimes I um, download a bunch of manga things and some of them suck. Is there so, something on my phone? Ken May. No, there's uh, not something on your phone. Yeah. It, well, really there not. is there is stuff on your phone, but Isn't you have to sh- download it from GitHub yeah. and then you have to hook it up to a reader. No. Um, but not yes, shown in jump? Not shown in jump? Mm, if you, you want to buy it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a real job. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you want to do it the correct way and buy it, then yes, I think Shonen Jump is the legal way to do it. And that would be the yeah. best way. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, uh, Gohan, every, every all of them have their new form. Mm. And you have Ego, Ultra in, in, you have Ego, Instinct, and then and Gohan's ethos. form. Ethos? What? No, it's... Id? Ultra do, Id? Do, do, do you want me to spoil it or not? And what do we want? <laughs> Um, I can mute y'all. 
<laughs> Nat's, Nat's about to spoil Hold it. Up your He's finger. looking that shit up. Okay. Gohan's Gohan's new form is the beast form. Oh, I just read it too. Yeah. Gohan's new form is the beast form. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put oh, my finger down. In, don't it's say in it. The don't movie. say it. Okay, it is. It okay, is. Okay, but don't okay, say it. Okay. 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 Hi. Um, and that's canon. That is canon. <laughs> yes. Okay. That oh is canon. man. Do I even have an account? I'm gonna be reading this. I'm finally gonna get back into reading manga. You should also yeah. read Dandadan. Slow down, Dan Matt. Dandadan is good. <laughs> and Kaiju number eight. Wait until I'm done before you say stuff like that. If you overwhelm me. It's not gonna happen. Kagurobachi. Not gonna happen. Oh my gosh. Dude, I, dude, actually, scratch everything. Read, like, read I'm Dragon I'm deafening Ball Z. again? Obviously. No, 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 no. Read Dragon Ball Z. Read Dragon Ball Z. But, like. Sorry, I can hear you again now. Read Dragon Ball Z, but, like, if you can fit it, Kagurobachi is, like, the next My Hero Academia in terms of popularity. Look, the it's thing like, is, I read Breaker and then I never needed to read another manga again. I mean the breaker. This is this so is good. this is close. Have you caught up mm. on the breaker, by the way, Anthony, for season three? There's a new breaker. It yeah. came back. Yeah, there has yeah, I'm gonna it's die. Back. I gotta leave. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have no idea. Die. There were years, years in I which know. I would because Eric and I used to be roommates. And so Breaker would come up more often when we were roommates because sometimes what not not even sometimes, to this day. When I like am walking around gently, I'll like do like ankle technique or foot technique, right? Because it's like, <laughs> oh, I was about to trip or something, and I just like did a little tiny little awesomeness with my leg, and I think about breaker. And so when when yeah. we lived together, I'd be like, dude, is there a new breaker out? And he'd be like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> like no. forever. No. But they finished uh, season one of the third. Uh, series mm. in the breaker and season two is supposed to release sometime this year all right well i'm gonna just re start rereading it completely Dandadan it's so Garabachi, good dragon ball z and the breaker and uh, just those those five those five is it five did i i yeah. can't count well i i guess uh with that i don't have anything else i don't have anything else I yeah, and I it. I am I'm like so hungry. Oh my god! So I'm gonna I'm gonna go get some food. <laughs> you guys that, enjoy your dinner. Yes, sir. Wonderful show. We will see you in the next one. For any Twitch and YouTube people, like subscribe, do all the stuff for the channels. We'll be here every Monday from seven to nine thirty, and we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Bye. Peace. Bye. <laughs>